So we need to um, do some background knowledge to be able to answer questions six and seven. So let's kind of review what we've done already. Step one, we had to figure out our roof load. And we did that questions one through four. You figured out the roof live load, the snow load, the dead load, calculated that. Step two is to find how, um, what type of steel decking you need for your roof. And that was question five. We just figured that out, it was deck 20. And now our final step is, okay, underneath that corrugated metal, okay, and a reminder, here's our corrugated metal, and then we have those layers of our roof, right, that's built up on that. And then we have a structural support, whether it's an I-beam or an open web truss, whatever that structural support is, now we need to figure out how big and how strong that needs to be to support all of this. So that's kind of our third and final goal here. So background knowledge, let's talk about load pass. Um, what you have in the beginning, okay, so in a load path is how does the weight of the building move through the building? So you have your weight at the very top, okay, pushing down on it, such as a snow load. Um, that load pushes on the roof, which then pushes on these columns goes down into your foundation wall and then out through your footing. Uh, from your floor, you have a load, right? There's people pushing down on the floor. That load is then distributed out to the columns and then down and through your footings, okay? So everything kind of goes down and out, just like your body, right? Your head is pushing on your neck, neck's pushing on your body, your like core, then your legs are pushing on your feet, and all that weight, everything, all of your body is supported by your feet and then that load is distributed out into the ground. Okay, so it's a very similar process how loads go through a building. So talking about load path um, is how it travels through a structural support system. So this is an example. Um, we have some beams here. So if you have a, a point load or a concentrated load hitting that beam, it then goes out to that beam, over to that girder, uh, girder excuse me, down that column and through the footing. Okay, so it has to have follow a continuous load path. If there was a break, say there was no, this beam did not connect to this girder, then that load could not be supported and it would break and it would fail. So we always have to make sure it's all connected and flows out through our foundation, which is very strong this one. Um, so some structural elements that we think about um, and some terms that I want to go over with you is in this diagram. So. I started talking about this a little bit, and now I'm going to take it one step further um, and kind of explain the difference between a beam, girder, column, and footing. I'm going to just use those terms, but now we're going to break it down. So we're going to start with the smallest, uh, kind of small structural system, which is a beam, okay? These are beams. Beams, you will notice most of the time, beams will connect to a girder. Now, what is a girder? A girder is um, a bigger beam, it's a heavier duty beam that supports other beams. So you'll notice, see how this beam is going into that girder, and there's another beam going into it, and this beam's going into it. So a girder, you could say beam, and a lot of people do, okay? In the industry, they have all of these a beam, all right? Anything that's horizontal is a beam. But actually, technically, to use correct terms, these are beams and girders are bigger and beams connect to them. Okay, so just so you know the difference. But if you said this is a beam, no one would correct you because kind of everyone uses that term. So um, kind of just a brief overview. Beams are anything that's horizontal. It supports the structure horizontally. Um, this is like our I beam here. Okay, so this is an I beam. All right, then um, from our beam, we go to our girder. Our girder connects to our column. So a column is a post, right? It's a vertical structural support. So it goes to your column, and then from your column, it goes down to a footing. So this um, spreads the load. We talked about this in foundation systems a lot. So if you thought about in the sand, if you poked, um, if you say didn't have a foot, right? And you just had like this sharp spike, if you're like a, a pirate, right? That spike would easily just kind of sink into the sand as opposed to your foot, your foot is a wider area. It distributes the load so you don't really sink into the sand. Okay, so that's kind of the difference. So we always want a footing to help distribute that load at the bottom. 
Um, just so you know, columns don't think that they only can be made out of steel. Right? You can use a, an I-beam and put it vertically as a column, but columns can be made out of concrete as well. Um, so I don't want you to think that it can only be steel. All right, um, so now that we know those terms, let's kind of talk about, um, uh, actually I think, oh, we go into all of this. Okay, so kind of looking at this idea, looking straight down at it. That's called a framing plan. We already started kind of talking about this a little bit. So here's our framing plan. So we're looking straight down, and these are our, um, our beams, okay? Here's our girder, right? Our girder has other beams connecting into it. Here's our column. So when you look at down at your column, it's actually an I. So these are your columns. So that's a framing plan. Now what we have to distinguish is the difference between an interior beam and an exterior beam because they have different loads on them. Okay, so what I want you to know is an interior beam, you'll notice that there's beams on either side of it. As opposed to an exterior beam, there's only a beam on one side of it. There's nothing on the outside. So that would be like an outside wall would have an exterior beam. Okay, so now let's talk about the difference of loading between the two. So normally I'd have people up here and kind of help describing this, but just pretend these are people. I'll pause. Tiani, Castro, John, please report. To 2400. Deani Castro John, please report to room 2400. Okay, so um, pretend that people are standing here just like this. These two are exterior beams, so exterior wall. Okay, they only have a beam on one side of them. This middle person is an interior beam, they have beams on either side of them. And then this person is an exterior beam, there's only another beam on one side. So if I put a load on them, Okay, so like a piece of foam, right, or steel decking, this is their load that's on top of them. Now you'll notice that the interior beam is responsible for a lot more weight, right? It has to not only hold this piece of foam, but it has to hold this other piece of foam as well. Well, where an exterior beam is only responsible for that one piece of foam, okay? So um, uh, we're going to start talking about tributary width. So the tributary width is the distance between beams and how much of that uh, width that that beam is responsible for. So exterior beams are only responsible for half, okay? And that kind of makes sense, right? They're only responsible for the weight of the foam up until halfway between them, right? Because the interior beam then covers the other half. All right, so their tributary width would only be three feet, right? It's halfway the distance between. I can say that here. As opposed to an interior beam, right? It's responsible for the width of the foam halfway this way and halfway this way. So three feet on each side. So its total tributary width is six feet, okay? So interior beams have to support a greater load, so they have a larger tributary width, okay? So, looking at back at our framing plan, kind of taking this idea, right, and taking it into a framing plan. So here is an interior beam, right? It has a beam on either side of it. So this is an interior beam. So if I put um, my floor across this, it is responsible for the weight of the floor halfway to the other beam, so halfway, it's responsible for all this, and it's responsible for the load halfway to the next beam, okay? And the way you get that distance is by looking over here. So the spacing between beams is 6 feet 8 inches. All right. So I'm responsible for 3 feet 4 inches on this side and 3 feet 4 inches on this side for a total tributary width of 6 feet 8 inches. That's an interior beam. If you did an exterior beam, they would only be responsible for half of this width. So 3 feet 4 inches is their tributary width. Um, Something that we also talk about, we won't get into this activity too much, but I want to let you kind of know about it, is the tributary area. So the entire area that this beam is responsible for is the length of the beam. So how long is it? It's 18 feet long, span length, and then multiply that by the width that it's responsible for, right? That's how you would get this area of this rectangle. So that's how you get tributary area. And then I do that calculation for you there. Don't forget, have to convert units, very important. You can't just put in 6 feet 8 inches. You have to convert everything to feet.
Okay. Um, now, uh, figuring out our uniform load. Okay. So as we talked about a while back, uniform load is the same load that's distributed across that beam. So as we know, on um, like our roof, every foot is 47 pounds per square foot. Okay. So that's our roof load. We know it's 47 pounds per square foot. So every little square foot is 47 pounds. Okay. All along here, 47 pounds. All right. All of that load is supported by this beam. Okay, and we're trying to figure out what is the load on that beam. So we take our 47 pounds per square foot and multiply it by the tributary width. Oh, and I didn't put it there. So it would have been 47 times 6.67. Would have given you your uniform load on your beam. Okay. Um, did we do a practice here? Yeah, we do. Okay, so quick practice. Assume that the roof system must support its own weight of 20 pounds per square foot and a live load of 105 pounds per square foot and a snow load, okay? So say, oh, it has to, your, your uh, roof system has to support all these loads, dead load, live load, and snow load. So the first thing that we have to do is figure out our roof load. So we're gonna add them all up. Our total roof load is 140 square, uh, pounds per square feet. Um, then you're gonna convert that into a uniform load, okay? Um, so your uniform load is your floor load times by your tributary width, okay? And we're using that width from the previous one, 6.67 feet. Multiply that out and you get 934 pounds per linear foot. So every foot, linear foot on that beam, has 934 pounds acting on. All right, now we're gonna jump to question six.